Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Oceanic Pro League. I'm, of course, Max Atlas Anderson, and this is Christopher Papa Smithy Smith. And what a game between Avant Garde and Die Wolves. Die Wolves turning around what looked like a worrying situation there because Chelby's Vi was monstrous. Yeah, Chelby's Vi was monstrous, and in the mid game, the pick comp was working effectively. It looked like they would be able to extend their lead, but it was all harangued by the excellent play of perfection in the top lane. Yeah, Perfection's picking up our MVP. He was amazing, almost unstoppable there, taking out Bad, ne Bad Game Lol, who is actually a sub there in the top lane, almost 1v1 and making sure that he could never really enter that lane safely. And you might think, okay, winning in a skill matchup's not that impressive, but what was so impressive to me about his play was understanding how to push his limits. It was keeping up that turret, extending that turret to about 21 minutes into the game before he took out that outer turret, and while the global gold wasn't there for his teammates, it just was left uh, Bad Game Law on the back foot. He could consistently go back to lane, pick up farm that would potentially have been pushed back out to Bad Game Law to farm safely. And he just harangued Avant into a series of bad decisions, which eventually led to their downfall. Yeah, and as soon as Perfections was involved in these team fights, of course, missed a couple of them, was non-factor in that dragon fight that got turned around by Avant Garde. But as soon as he was there, able to be a gigantic tank for his team. And once he starts building up those tanky items, and Aurelia just gets out of control. An honorable mention, though, should go to King, who was at 450 CS at about 39 minutes, which is unbelievable on his core. Cool Absolutely. I mean, he picked up so much empty lane farm. It was insane, especially when he compared it to his lane opponent. Part of that was, of course, the matchup. We yep. talked about a 20-30 CS advantage. I remember pace time about 25 minutes. It was about 100 CS already. He was able to grow what should have been a small advantage and just grow into a massive advantage by late game. Oh, most definitely. But we have our next matchup coming up for you guys. It's going to be Rich Gang now taking on Avant Garde. And Avant Garde need to turn around this momentum from this game against the Die Wolves. Yeah, and it's going to be a case of some of the more experienced head of Avant Garde, Chelby, for example, in the oh, jungle. Yeah talking to their team and kind of explain, to the new members of the team especially, telling them to shrug off that first game and double it down with impos impressive performance right here. And look, we saw Legacy do it on day one of the OPL, shrugging off that convincing loss to Chiefs and really putting in an impressive second win. Oh, yeah. They're going to need to do that again here. Yeah, for not certainly struggling in our first week, but Rich Gang were looking fantastic coming through, and as they qualified, their scoreline was amazing, coming through with 89 to 32 as far as kills to deaths is concerned, and they had convincing wins across the board. And yeah, not while all those games weren't necessarily short, it almost felt like they were playing with their food right there. They were able to take huge advantages in the early game and just end the game when they wanted to. They looked they were by far, I think, the most impressive team in that OCS. Yep. So decisive, so smart in their play calling, able to pick very tanky lineups and then just monopolize objectives to win through Dragon Snowball. And when they get started, it doesn't look like they ever turn around. We haven't seen them play from behind once. Yeah, and their jungle invades as well around the early game, able to collapse on any exchanges that do erupt in that jungle is just beautiful to see. Every member reacting instantly as soon as a scuffle breaks out and always managing to turn it around. And we'll see whether they can do it today against, as you mentioned, a veteran team in Avant Garde, even though they may have lost their sort of star bottom lane. Of course, the MVP for the final last year was Nada, and he's no longer actually playing League of Legends, which is very, very sad. He was a lovely, lovely person. But Mizui down the bottom lane, he's been struggling a little bit. Of course, went over to IAM, struggled a little bit over there. But He's been on the scene for a very long time, was a, a sub for the Chiefs, also subbed in in the mid lane for Keane when he was a member of Team Curse before leaving for North America. So Mizui's been around the traps for quite some time. We'll see whether he can sort of break back in here. His Ezreal performance wasn't qu quite there, of course, in a difficult matchup, and we'll see whether he can bring it back now. Of course, Corky, that's his comfort pick. You know, looking at that Avant team... You know, when we were kind of consulted about what we expected for this 2015 OPL season, it was so hard to redefine the team just because they've lost a lot of power. They lost a lot of star yeah. power from that bot lane. They have very capable people stepping in, but we're going to learn more about them this matchup, I think. We're going to learn if they have that moral fiber, if they have that teamwork that catapulted them to the 2014 championship. Yeah, and this is going to be the test against the new up-and-coming challenger team, but we are into champion select, ladies and gentlemen. Nidalee and Nah taken off the board from Rich Gang and Cassidy and Jarvan being removed on the side of Avant-Garde. This is 5.2, so that could actually be aimed at Shelby in the jungle, as far as that Nidalee event. I mean, concerned. the Nidalee jungle has been terrorizing both oh, solo queue and competitive, but usually that AP flavor. It's never fun to see 
see those spears coming out of vision. There's no missing call coming from your mid laner because, of course, shrouded in secrecy is that jungler. And so much power coming from that pick. I like to see the ban. And I'm kind of waiting for the Ari ban right here. It's escaped the first five bans, at least. It has. And Kensti's played a lot of Ari, of course. Has been playing against the likes of Swiffer for a long time. Has experience with that Ari and arguably a horrible way. But LeBlanc taken off the board and Rek'Sai now being removed. So that Ari is still available and incredibly strong on this patch. And Chenny Boy, he loves his assassins. He'd be able to pick that one up if they wanted to, but they've got 47 seconds and we'll see what they go with. There are a lot of picks still available. The likes of Rumble are up. Jarvan was taken off the board, but the Ari, that's almost a no-brainer. Although some of the power of Ari has been moved away of maybe the assassination flavor, of course, not the DFG Ari. Rest in peace, that item, oh, unfortunately. Let's not talk about that. We don't want to start but this sad. Because of the changes, the little tweaks, so much safer in lane with that burst of movement speed when you use your Q, and the W damage coming out instantly, it's kind of an understated uh, change, but it's just so much quicker, that burst right there. So much more difficult to calculate how much damage coming out of that Ari, and still so, so powerful in that mid lane. Oh, yeah, bad game, lol. Actually going to lock away his Aurelia here, so Saw Perfections and uh, struggled against that matchup and said, all right, well, I guess I'll just do that and it'll be fine. But is the sub top laner here and Rich Homie, that guy knows what he's doing there in the top side of the map and we know his rotational play and his ability to control his wave as well is very, very strong. But Bad Game Law now with a very powerful top lane pick and Shelby locking away Johnny on this Thresh. It looks like they're considering taking away the Vi from Shelby. Yeah, it's Ooh. very quick lock and you gotta say, Rich game, one thing we can say, even from just these first three picks, they're very decisive in the champions they're choosing. They're not considering things. They've clearly come in with a plan. They have, but this is going to give Mizui that Corky pick, which he definitely loves. Of course, hated to see that in the hands of his lane opponent in the last matchup, but more than happy to pick that one up now. But he's looking at the Graves for a potential other option. I would like to see him on that comfort pick if he would like to lock it in. The other thing is as well, is that Chelby's Lee Sin is available, and if Chelby can play a champion, it is Lee Sin. Of course, included that Kha'Zix a little while ago, when it was sort of that top tier pick, but has fallen off, and he has that opportunity. Now, Kensti though, going back to his Lulu, potentially. And potentially, they won't pick up a, a uh, jungler until the fifth pick right here. Yeah. Now, if we draw from our LPL experience, one of the picks we've seen so popular against Vi has been that Nunu. Nunu is available right here. I'm not sure if we'll see the Yeti on the Oceanic Rifts here today, oh, oh, but I think he'll start coming in and look at that last second change from both of them. Some power picks coming out here. I very much like this. Of course, Kensti, known for his Twisted Fate play. He is amazing on that champion, able to affect so many different lanes. You tie that in with Bad Game Lol coming through on a teleport. That is terrifying, not to mention, now we've got Shelby on that Lee Sin, one of his favorite champions. Often goes way too deep. This guy is the Ham Lord on Lee Sin, follows almost every Sonic Wave, but you get a gold card and a Sonic Wave Resonating Strike, that's so easy. And Twisted Fate, he's always kind of a buff to your jungler, because what it means is if you have Twisted Fate and you counter jungle on that aggressive skirmishing Lee Sin, you know that you've gonna, you're going to have a stun card in your back pocket almost instantly. Those rotations from Twisted Fate so much faster than even Ari with all her mobility right there. So we might see some very aggressive counter jungling coming out from Lee Sin, knowing he's got that pressure from the mid lane as well. Yeah, but he's going to have to be pretty careful as Rich Homie's looking at his Malphite. This is the Oceanic flavor. You know that one, of course. Malphite being played over here quite often. Destiny going to lock away that uh, Morgana as well in the bottom lane. And Callista might be the opportunity picked up here by Mizui. It's unflappable, this Rich Gang team. We see those last second changes. Is that going to affect your draft? No, we know exactly what we want. And I was ready to speculate about Malphite just because Rich Homie saw already a lot of success on that champion in and the qualifying stages. In Aurelia too. Absolutely. It's one of those situations where there's not that many great matchups against Aurelia. If you let her get going, we saw how big an Aurelia can get last year's on perfection. The attack speed slow is a very good stat and Malphite naturally builds in a path that deals with Aurelia. So while yeah. it's not a huge matchup, it's definitely not a counter matchup, it's a lot of utility being able to get away on that Malphite. He can have a fairly comfortable laning phase against Aurelia and it's already a champion that Rich Gain show plenty of proficiency on. Yeah, but I do like the then answering Corky pick if they do decide to lock this one away. Of course, a lot of magic damage able to get through the armor stacking that is going to come down on this Malphite. It is going to be locked away, so Mizui on that Comfort Champion, paired up with Johnny in that bottom lane with a lot of playmaking potential on this Thresh as well, but 
double spell shields coming through on the side of Rich Gang, and it's going to be pretty difficult to break through that wall. It's going to be a very fascinating mid-game in general, just because you always wait to see those first couple of destinies coming out from Twisted Fate to work out, all right, was the pick worth it, or is this going to be one of those Twisted Fates that kind of relegated to just being a wave clearer? Mm. So there's a lot of there's a lot of questions right there. I mean, the mid game's strong on Rich Game as well. Doing Rich Game, don't 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 get me wrong. Malphite in the mid game's very strong. Ari has shown just so many levels and of power increase coming up oh, with yeah. these changes right here. It feels like this game's going to come to a head very quickly in the mid game, and hopefully, for us viewers, that means going to be some excellent team fighting. It'll be interesting to see Rich Gang. Their first real test, you'd have to say. They had a pretty breezy qualifier. Now they're against one of the established teams, one of the auto qualifying teams to this OPL. And it'll be interesting to see whether they can stand up against the increased pressure of this big stage. Yeah, the Rich Gang have, of course, had a lot of hype around them. And it's sort of up to them now, now that they've made it to the big time into this OPL, whether they can really show up. But they definitely have a team comp that can do it. And I want to look at this mid lane. Chenny Boy has been around the traps for a long time. Played on Team UTS, actually, a university team to come through into one of our qualifiers. Unfortunately, didn't make it to the final of that one, but... He's definitely shown some promise there in that mid lane. Been playing for a very, very long time, though. That's not the only team he's been on, ladies and gentlemen. But now in the hand, with Ari in his hands, 1v1 against Twisted Fate, that matchup goes almost in the hands of Ari. Yeah, it always was considered a counter matchup for Twisted Fate yeah. in the mid lane there. So to see him pick Twisted Fate in screams to me that Avant have a really set mid game plan of getting on top of the enemy jungler right here, on getting those aggressive snowballs going, because he's not picked for lane, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. So we'll see whether those destinies can come through. Of course, if Twisted Fate manages to get that snowball rolling for his team, he can definitely be a force to be reckoned with. And as soon as he can one combo down an Ari, there's not going to be any problems there. But at the beginning, being so immobile is going to be very difficult here for Kensti. And you have to think the assassination potential is always going to be in Ari's pocket. Okay, some of her numbers would change, but Twisted Fate... To get to a situation where you can really just kill someone with, say, a Lich Bane is uh, a lot of AP and a lot of snowball <laughs> yeah. already happening at that point for that I'm to be a problem. I'm thinking he's going to be like 12 0 1 or something like that. by like. So, what does that minutes. game look like exactly? <laughs> like, are they just I having. I think that's people the, filing into the turrets. Yeah? Like, level one, just stun card, <laughs> pentakill, no problem. <laughs> no problem. I don't, think at the all. Kill, I don't think the death time is a long enough to get a pentakill at level one. Yeah, I'm sure there's a YouTube. Com uh, YouTube video that uh, proves me wrong, but... I think that's a teleport Darius with Apprehend that does oh. that. Oh, dear. <laughs> if only that still worked, ladies and gentlemen. But around the traps, I mean, we do have in the top lane, this difficult matchup for bad game lol, had a rough game last time. Is is he going to need some jungle pressure up there as well? Is that going to be sort of the time when Chenny Boy can capitalize on this this mid lane pick? I think you kind of have to look at the Malphite, get a feel for what item he's starting, what his base stats are. I mean, maybe he'll go heavy into AP and try and, you know, chunk them down with the Q right there, the seismic shard, but it's mm -hmm. probably just going to be the wave clear. It's probably going to be him trying to harass Aurelia down, but probably staying about even in CS. So you are going to let Aurelia get to the mid game with the Trinity Force and maybe, you know, the startings of Aranduins, which is the build we saw from Perfection last game. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a case of can Aurelia get on your back line and negate the massive in, uh, engage event you always have with Malphite. Malphite's always the go champion. It's always a great champion to have in Solid. It's one of the reasons why it's such a popular pick on the Oceanic server is reliable engage is something you can never really quantify and ranked by at all levels. Having such a reliable oh, yeah. engage can be a massive advantage right here. So it's, they're going to try and trade on that. And they've already shown proficiency on the champion and their rotations have been one of the strengths of their play. So, I mean, what better champion to catch teams in, in, in a slow rotation than Malphite? Well, exactly right. And t pair that up with the likes of this on the hunt coming through from Siva. And if you can get Destiny right in amongst these team fights, Soul Shackle down the members of Avant Garde as well. There's so much lockdown potential and really easy charms to come through from Chenny Boy. He can almost just come in at the end alongside um, uh, the AD carry here and just tear people apart. Just play cleanup duty, really. And you can kind of see how the game goes from both sides. You can kind of see when the team's winning, what the team fights look like, what the comps look like. But the big unknowns are always the Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate's such a hit or miss champion. You know, we all remember the days of Messiah going in there, winning games off his own back with that Zonius play. And then we actually saw a Twisted Fate in the LPL this weekend really struggle and be almost completely irrelevant. So it's always that first couple of destinies. That's what Messiah, the greatest Twisted Fate of all time, said. So let's watch how Kensti does in this game. Yeah, let's get onto the rift, ladies and gentlemen, with Rich Gang taking on Avant Garde. Rich Gang for this game going to be on our blue side as Avant Garde 
pick up the red shorts. Of course, these guys are going to be facing each other twice as the season goes along. And it's going to be switching sides here as well as Johnny waiting in this brush. And Bad Game All and Shelby hanging around as well. And if they get a pick early on, this could start the snowball that they need. And it's definitely going to be an academic exercise for both teams right here. Although Chenny Boy's in a bit of trouble. Yeah, Descent's... Ooh, nice dodge out of the way there by Chenny Boy. Manages to steer clear of that Sonic Wave as well. Is Phosphorus Bomb going to come down onto his head? But the reason why I say that is, all right, Ava are on the back foot. They've lost their first series right here. We're seeing a bit of character right here going for the aggressive invade. They're going to maybe get the gold card. And Chenny has to use his flash. Yeah, he's going to flash out of the way. Gets an Orbit Deception out, but doesn't do too much damage. And Chelby going to get the ward away. And this is very good news for Avant-Garde because you know Chelby wants to be mid. And now he can almost come there level two. And the sign of a top team is to shrug off that first game loss and come in strong here against one of these newly promoted teams. That's what we're looking for from Avant. But on the other side, people are really talking about up, up, up rich, the Rich Gang lineup, talking up the, the chances this team has right here. They're going to want to start so confidently and show that they can hang with the big boys from the start. We'll see whether they can do it, of course. Nice ward on the Krugs here from Avantgarde. They have this bottom side all lit up, and they're going for a lane swap, actually, not wanting to face off against the duo of Rich Gang. And what do you think about this lane swap situation? Because you could imagine Avantgarde... Is it just getting away from that Malphite matchup for Aurelia? I mean, Corky against Siva, he kind of struggles a bit in that lane just because he's kind of forced to use his Phosphorus Bomb to farm. So he can actually have mana issues trying to keep pace with all the wave clear coming out from the Siva. It also, again, it could just be the fact that Aurelia is probably one of the most renowned 1v2 laners. She can farm so well at turret with that Q with the ability of getting as many CS as possible. And it looks like it's going to be the strong push, as we can see from the minimap here. So much pressure being applied to Aurelia. Actually, both teams opting into pushing very aggressively. If, a team, if, if you have a situation where teams are pushing aggressively into you and it's a 1v2 Malphite versus a 1v2 Aurelia, you should expect a significant CS advantage for Aurelia. Yeah, and Oceanic teams actually love doing this fast push strategy sort of later in the season. I believe it was in 2014. Rich Homie now going to be trying to farm up underneath this turret. The ground slam not going to quite find that minion. It's a little bit unfortunate. Seismic Shard's going to sort him out on that one though, and does not doing too badly. Is Rich Homie up here. But it is nice to see some of these different um, game strategies coming out in the sixth game of the OPL. So we finally see the first lane swap right here. Yeah. You can see that Lee Sin, Juni at least, is thinking about going for an aggressive invade onto the enemy blue, but not quite on the same wavelength as Chelby, who's far back in his own jungle. Yeah, Huey actually going to start up this blue buff. Might take a fair bit of damage from it, and Juni is waiting around. Didn't see that ward go down by the looks of things, and Chelby very, very low in his jungle. Not going to be able to offer any assistance. Is Juni just going to walk through and potentially even get gets the reset on the blue buff, and that is going to be hugely detrimental for Huey here because he's not going to be able to continue that jungle route. He's going to have to go back, most likely. It is a definitely a significant one. You would think, okay, he didn't steal away the blue. What a waste of time. But he's actually added five to six seconds to Vi's clear right here and also increased the amount of damage that he's, done, that he's taken in the jungle just from the sheer fact of having to sit there and eat the damages from the blue buff to stop the continuous reset right there. So it's really helped out his team because it's relieved pressure because it's going to take longer for Vi to hit that level six and it's going to take mean that... He, she wasn't really in a position to go and go for an aggressive gank right now because just had eaten too much damage. Yeah, and Shelby, you can see in that mid lane, already positioning himself in order to try and capitalize on Chenny Boy's flash being down. Almost back up again, but there's the ghost being popped as well. There's the gold card, Ch Kensi. He's going to get caught by the charm. Huey's around here, but first blood going to Chelby, and that was so predictable. Wonderful jungle pathing from Chelby there, though. We wondered why he wasn't going for the invade, but he was just trying to get on the correct side of the jungle. He didn't worry about contesting the blue buff. They kind of knew that Huey would have to back off, and ganking a, a member that doesn't have flash the play calling is strong from, from uh, Avant Garden to start this game. Yeah, beautifully played. And Shelby now starting his invade route. Going over to these Krugs here and Johnny lending him a hand as well. As they're just going to leave Mizui there on the top side of the map just to soak farm and experience. They want to get this Corky to that stage of the game where he can be throwing out these rockets. They want to accelerate this game. Shelby making his way around. Bad game all. Oh, Shelby actually flashing immediately the teleport to come down from Rich Homie. He's not quite... Up to level yet as bad game while he's come in, but Chelby's taking so much damage. Safeguards away. He's so incredibly low. The ricochet, the flash from Rich Homie, and he picks that one up. Beautiful spell shield as well.
from Day Shifter to stop that death sentence. A nice turnaround from Rich Gang. Just slight over aggression coming out from Chelby right there. Who would have thought? They saw them come through the walls. They had advanced knowledge. The communication was very good with Malphite. He's actually been able to push up the minion wave in the top lane as well. So he's not losing significant minions to the turret. So the rotational play from Rich Gang coming up huge. Yeah, and they are going to be able to transition into this dragon here as well as Kensti was forced to blow his flash after wandering around a little bit awkwardly there, trying to go in and out of vision, unable to really capitalize. Does have a CS advantage, but Dragon going down here for Rich Gang, they're doing well. And sadly, the story for Chelby actually in both games has been Chelby, give, Chelby giveth and Chelby taketh away. It's just too <laughs> much aggression. Getting such a wonderful start for his oh, team. Oh, the flash into the charm there as well as Ch Kensi just gets destroyed. Yeah, it's a very, very nice pick. The max range charm coming out. Rich Gang are turning it on. They are, and Chenny Boy able to land everything that he needs to on this incredibly powerful Ari pick at this stage. Running low on that mana, but they want to get some pressure on this turret, and we were talking about Rich Gang, their ability to rotate around these maps. They just moved three people mid to pick up a kill and just did it so beautifully. Yeah, and for this early game, for the six, first six minutes, we already have so much to talk about. Great jungle pathing by Chelby to pick up that first blood. So smart to go for the Ari, who he knew he'd already blown the flash early. But then again, the overzealous uh, aggression and the great teleport. Both teams are kind of living up to their strengths right here. The early jungle rotations from Chelby has been wonderful, but the overall team movement from Rich Gang has been very on point. Certainly has. They have lost out a little bit on that farm front as far as their solo lanes and the AD carrier concerned. Shelby a little bit behind there in the jungle, but 46 CS onto Kensti here and almost having that destiny actually just became available here. So we'll see whether the sort of the, the TF mantra of if you manage to create a successful gank early on with that destiny, whether that can really change the game. And before that uh, kind of ill-advised gank came in the bottom lane, that was what I was going to talk about is they were on top of the enemy mid laner. They were in the enemy jungle, head and experience, without even having the destiny. So it sounded like the destiny was going to be double up right there. It was going to be a huge win. But now they're on the back foot suddenly just because of that slight misfire in the bottom lane. So it's just interesting how fast this game can change. Yeah, it's Kensti. Gonna pick up himself a blue buff. Chenny Boy has been pinged out, able to clear out this pink ward, replace it with his own that you could imagine Shelby probably wants to remove. He's getting pinged out here, of course, being spotted by some Rich Gang wards. Nice deep vision control being gained here by Rich Gang. They want to be able to move around this map comfortably. And Chenny Boy happily warding up this mid side as well. Wants to. Very aggressive ward, exactly though, Atlas. There. He was completely disrespecting that Twisted Fate. Said, all right, here's the ward. You know where it is. You can sweep it later, but I know exactly where you are for your first destiny. He's not going to be able to... He, of course, wants to cheat the right direction, and Chenny Boy wants to be able to detect exactly where he's going. And the importance of that ward is all about, as you say, the moment that you fake out, because usually you'll see Twisted Fate, after they clear the wave, step out of lane just to open up a bit of question. But less questions here, but more questions for Rich Gang. Yeah, Dragon Rage Kick is available here. Finds it onto Rich, homie, who's going to use that Unstoppable Force to escape. Transcendent Blade's coming down here as well as the Flash to come in, and Bad Game Lol picks up the kill. Beautiful dive. I actually thought the Unstoppable Force would open up more distance right there. I don't know if that was complete max range cast, but the follow came through from Chelby, and good to see Bad Game Lord play aggressively after being so far on the back foot last series. Still able to shrug that off and play aggressively now. Yeah, and has a 20 CS advantage here as well. Has the makings of that phage, so working towards that Trinity Force, you can imagine probably wants to go back when he has enough money to finish off that Sheen and can really start bullying Rich Homie around. And with that extra AP as well, that Equilibrium Strike is going to be doing a little bit of extra damage here to Rich Homie, who hasn't managed to pick up any resistances yet, but probably will be going towards more of that armor. Absolutely. I mean, we see the start with the... Uh we see the start with the giant spell coming here. It might be the Sunfire. That's the aggressive choice for Malphite. Sometimes we do see the randoms. Of course, he has armor scaling, so it gives him a little bit of a boost of damage as well right here. But pr maybe I, I, if I was a betting man, I'd say the Sunfire just to give him a bit more wave push to try and hold the wave against this Aurelia. Yeah, and some early power as well. Of course, a cheaper armor item in that Sunfire Cape, often for getting yourself that advantage earlier on in the game. Of course, Randy is probably going to suit you a little bit better as the game progresses, but if you need armor now, it's a good decision. And he's struggling a little bit here. Bear Game Log going to spot out that pink ward there as well. He wanders over his own and able to clear out some of this exceptional rich gang vision 
that they have managed to get around this map. Ooh, Chenny Boy and Destiny are going to find Shelby here, who's going to safeguard to a war. Destiny's going to spot out that pink there as well, so they'll clear that one out. Rich Gang, are they at the position now when they really want to be looking for these picks? I mean, with this with this uh, Ari definitely right here, she doesn't have her Merlin Nomicons, not the massive first item picked out right here, but so, so song, strong in the transitions. And with Morgana grouped right here, the pick potential of Morgana via Ari doesn't even need to be spelled out. Yeah, Charm going to land. There's the Dark Binding as well. And Kenshi's just going to get destroyed. Layering of CC. Chelby, he's found his way in here. Sonic Wave resonating struck. Of course he followed it. But there's the Soul Shackles and Chenny Boy picks up the kill. The Beautiful play by Rich Gang. The skirmishing from Rich Gang is wonderful and they might not be done. Look at this CC layering as well. The Foxfire going to find Johnny, but Mizui is going to save him here by turning up in just the nick of time. And Shenny Boy, full health here as well, has charged up that passive to get himself some spell vamp on this one. And this Ari is definitely turning it on after a difficult early phase. 3 1 and 0 now. And Catching back up in CS. Completely ridiculous that Huey didn't fall right there. The secondary charm saving his mate right there and keeping him alive. It's just excellent team fighting coming up from Rich Gang. They're showing all the qualities that built up the hype around this team in the preseason. And Bad Game while actually ignoring that phage for now, wants to have some extra burst damage now that he has a little bit of a lead in this lane here against Rich Homie. That equilibrium strike starting to do some work on the Malphite up here, but... It doesn't really matter about keeping down a Malphite. He will always have that unstoppable force. And it, as long as he unstoppable forces and then uses a ground slam, he's done his job. And kind of one thing I'd like to see coming out of Rich Homie right here, it's kind of not an intuitive buy. And we're probably not going to see it now. We see the chain versus It's probably going to be the Sunfire K first, and we might see a fight. Oh, Kenzie again getting caught up. There's the charm from Chenny Boy. The teleport from Rich Homie just because they want to go for another dragon. And this is going to be the second here for Rich Gang. They have so much power this game. 0, 3, and 1 is Kensti right now. Picking Twisted Fate into what was always a counter matchup. You'd have to say probably even more so given Ari's power on this 5.2 patch. It has not paid off whatsoever in the first 12 minutes. Yeah, Vanka going for this trade with the top turret in the outer ring, but... Not going to be enough here as Mizui forced to use that Valkyrie to get over the wall. Does have his flash available as well, but the rest of Rich Gang, oh, they spot him out. Mizui, you're in trouble. Unstoppable force. In trouble. Yeah, that was a word. Unstoppable force going to be used to pick up that kill, though. Rich Homie, he's getting back into this game. 2 1 and 1 now. And although Avant were able to push up the top turret, so little reward compared to all the map vision and pressure Rich Gang put on. You see the aggressive pink wards coming in. They're trying to get the pick on Honey. Yep, that was Johnny. just pressing R on him. Is Huey just going to just meander his way through? Chenny Boy, a little bit low on mana here as Chelby going super aggressive. Huey has so much damage here as well as he hits that Vault Breaker. And Chelby, oh, Destiny flashing over. Dark Binding not going to find Chelby. The Flash, Foxfire will do it. And Chenny Boy picks up the kill. Yeah, the instant fox, uh, Foxfire damage, managing to pick up the kill right there. Rich Gang skirmishing. I mean, it's something that we highlighted in the, in the uh, OCS, but it continues to be a real treat to their play. And I love the aggressive pink wards coming out. They're really pushing their advantage as well. I guess the small point I was going to make is that it would have been interesting to jump from a giant spell just into a frozen heart, but Rich Homie, he's going to shrug off this damage probably. Yeah, he's doing the best he can, but he's taking a lot of damage. Mizui's around here as well. Johnny's here as well, forced to flash over, but Bad Game Law, he wants to pick it up, and there's the destiny, and they get one kill, but Rich Gang, they probably don't mind because they'll just let him die and then continue the pressure. Yeah, Malphite with no ult. Blowing so many, some, like a summoner spell, a huge long cooldown ultimate. That's the first real destiny coming out from Kensti, basically to pick up what was, should have been a free kill already. Small win for such a massive load of cooldowns. Yeah, Chenny Boy finding another charm here under Mizui. His eye is definitely in as far as these skill shots are concerned. And the Dark Bindings again threatening to lock down the members of Avant Garde. And I love that combination of abilities as well. And Rich Gang's draft phase is just fantastic because this is exactly what they're good at and they're picking the perfect champions for how they play the game this pick comp style this sort of mid-game skirmishing just plays to their strengths so beautifully and the question has to be asked how do they get Ari on patch 5.2 given the fact they're already known for strong rotations and pick comp play anyway they're not known for picking hyper carry comps they're all about controlling the early and mid game sign that objective snowball and they get perhaps the strongest champion of all on this patch yep, that being said bad game lol has picked up the Trinity Force, he's scaling through, as has Mizui as well. No Infinity Edge yet to be picked up from Day Shifted. 
and Sightstone is about to come through for Chelby. Would you have liked to see that Sightstone a little bit earlier here coming out of the jungle? It was able to get a very fast Sightstone last game, and it did pay off, especially in the early game picks. But Kensti, seeing him being picked, might be in trouble. Yeah, throws out the wild cards. Dark Binding going to be narrowly dodged there by Kensti as he's going to use that ghost to get away. So he's going to survive this one. Salt and Battery unable to find the range. But Rich Gang, they get a summoner spell for it. It's no worries. And kind of the issue here is that for Chelby to get aggressive wards down, he has to not die trying to do it. And given all the pick power already on display, you might say, okay, the Warrior Enchantment hasn't been working out too great for him. Rush spending all that gold on that item and then being so far behind in terms of kills is a problem. But there was never realistically any safe time to get wards down, just given how much Rich Games Gang has been on on top of this game. Yeah, but, you know, you have to mention the fact that Avant-Garde with these wild cards, with the Phosphorus Bomb and the Rockets here as well, they have a lot of long-range wave clear. Is Chenny Boy actually going to land another charm here onto Mizui? But he is going to be okay. Are they going to have the wave clear to sort of stave off this push? Because, of course, only one turret has gone down here for Rich Gang, and they need to be taking these structures to make this work. They have very solid wave clear, but the issue is that both Corky and Twisted Fate have to walk up to the minion wave get an auto attack range to get, for example, the, the red card onto the minion wave. And you've got so many pick choices, whether it's the, the, the charm, whether it's the dark binding, potentially the engage of Rich, Homie, and, and Huey right here. It's a risk for them to wave clear, despite having a lot of instant wave clear. Well, bad game log getting a lot of damage down to Rich, Homie. He's probably not going to be able to approach this creep wave very effectively. Chelby realizing this as well. He wants to lock him down. It's Rich, Homie, just going to happily wander amongst these creeps. There's the Unstoppable Force actually used. Transcendent Blades in response here as well. Chelby, he wants to find this fight. Probably going to ward hop over this one. Rich Homie going to have to stop that back. There's the Seismic Shard. Smite it down as well. Gets kicked and Chelby picks up an easy kill. Huey now trying to avenge his fallen brethren, but... Jenny Boy a little bit too far away and Huey not wanting to engage on his own. Wonderful leasing mechanics from Chelby right there to hit the Q between the minion wave. Pays off the warrior purchase with the very nice assassination damage coming through. With that, with that Sapphire Crystal, the item I've been trying to break up, which is going to be so important to this Rich Gang team, is that Frozen Heart right here. Already a core of Malphite's build, but look at all the attack speed base champions on Avant. The oh, Aurelia yeah. goes without being said. Leeson wants to proc his passive. Attack speed is rel relative right there. Kensti, of course, the, uh, the, the, the E right there, the stacked deck scales off attack speed to some degree. And although Mizui is on the cork, he's slightly less attack speed related, wants to have that attack speed too. So wonderful pick up. Could be a huge power spike when we see that item come out for Rich Gang. Yeah, Mizui actually using the power of this corky as well. Able to trade relatively effectively with Chenny Boy. He wants to go back and pick up some more items. Has the Home Guard enchant on his uh, Sorcerer's Shoe, so he can be able to get back to that lane. Pretty quickly, 5-1-1 one, and one now on this Ari. Actually hanging around there a little bit. They're wanting to create some pressure as they clear out the vision. Avant-Garde able to replace that one relatively quickly as the Rockets have come through. Oh, that Valkyrie was whew, dangerously timed as Mizui just watches the charm launch past his backside. This third dragon, though, might be a difficult one for Rich Gang to claim because we look at the items right here. Double Trinity Force completed on Avant Guard. So a significant jump in mid-game power coming out from this team. Okay, it's 19 minutes into the game. It's going to be difficult. It's the, the late game might be delayed, but it's undeniable right here. Definitely more trading power in this Corky compared to the Sivir, for example. They need to make uh, take advantage of this power spike because it's one of the strongest points in the game for Corky and for Aurelio. And Rich Gang looking to pressure this mid lane while the members of Avant Garde are around the Dragon area, wanting to make sure that this is a trade if it does come through. And Destiny threatening with that Dark Binding up very, very far. Not going to find his mark, and that big one did a lot of damage to Rich Gang here. The poke coming through from Corky is fantastic. You can see how comfortable Mizui is using that Valkyrie there. They do manage to take the turret. Was very lucky, actually, that Mizui was that far over to that side. Otherwise, he could have been locked down by Huey, who has that Assault and Battery available. Rich Gang now with complete vision control around this Dragon area. You could imagine the first member to come through. There's the Vault Breaker getting charged. Chelby gets locked down by a Dark Binding. Beautiful kick, though, and safeguards his way out. Chenny Boy, he's ignited him, and Chelby, you're going to fall down. Tried to turn it around, but unable to do so. Kensti split pushing in the bottom side, trading a kill for a turret. is going to work out in the favor of Avant Guard, but... 
It's always a worry when your members just keep getting picked off like this. We have to mention, though, that because... Of, oh, no, th it's been popped. Yeah, the on the hunt has been popped by Day Shifted here. Does force the flash. Actually, just going to get out of there by a bad game, lol. We have to mention that Kenstead split pushing down the bottom, lost on that middle turret, and then subsequently the kill. So it is a kill and a turret traded for a kill. And they've also lost position on this dragon right here. Kenstead's actually got a relatively good amount of unspent gold right here. He doesn't have any time to spend it, though. Yeah, look at this uh, dragon going down so low. The immediate exhaust on the bad game. Oh, the Destiny to come through out the backside. Destiny, he's almost done, but he's not going to die just yet as Mizui picks up the first kill. Ondo Huey here. Beautiful unstoppable force onto both of the carries, but Rich Homie gets it turned around, and Mizui is huge. Four for nothing for Avant-Garde. Wonderful fighting from Avant. They knew that they had chunked out Chenny Boy enough that he'd have to back. So it was at best going to be a 4v5 for Avant right there. And with the Trinity Force power spikes, they're still able to fight very well. The BF Sword was already completed. It's a massive mid-game Corky right there. And using their power spikes well to pick up a team fight win. Yeah, Charm not going to find its target here as Chenny Boy. Going to get the movement speed from the Q very necessary to get out of the way of all of these skill shots to come through. Orbit Deception tries to clear out this wave. The teleport to come in from Rich Homie as well. There's the charm onto Johnny. He's taking a bit of damage here. Foxfire to come through. Mizui doing a lot of follow up damage. There's the resonating strike. And Shelby from downtown trades one for one. <laughs> Every time. But it's a good one for one trade there just because it's Chenny Boy with so much engaged power. And we'll see the replay right here. The dive comes in by Bad Game Oil. He can't fall down quickly. And it's a very nice twist of fate all coming from Kenzie. Splits up the team completely. And this is the numbers advantage we're talking about. Ari is stranded just on the side of the mini map right there. Nothing she could do whatsoever. Rich Homie perhaps should have just done the evasive maneuvers early and just gotten out of that fight because he just gives away a free kill at the end. He does, and speaking of Rich Homie, he is now behind 60 CS at the 22-minute mark. I think Rich Gang have noticed that as they're positioning four members on this top side to try and keep this Aurelia down. Already 1-0 and 6 has the makings of what looks like to be potentially a Warmog's armor coming through. His Destiny, he's going super fast with his mobility boots. Dark Binding doesn't find its target. Chenny Boy looking for the charm. He's gonna land it here as the gold card's being popped. Kensty trying to get out. The Soul Shackle's gonna stop the Destiny though. Most definitely is Day Shifted. Gonna just come through with that boomerang. Shelby comes down and punishes Destiny for that one. Shelby is so aggressive on this champion. There's the Sonic Wave. Is he gonna have the Tempest? There it is, slams him down. Picks up another kill. Yeah, wonderful Lee Sin mechanic coming in, consistently picking up those exit kills. He has really no business coming out, but just wonderfully on top of those mechanics right there. And they keep testing this Avant team that's powered up in the mid game, and Avant keeps showing them they've picked for the mid game. This is their point of power, and Rich Game need to be careful to not put themselves in a hole. Yeah, and Avant Guard, what they seem to have done is taken Rich Gang's playstyle and said, all right, well, we'll do the same thing. The, all of these skirmishes coming through as the Death Sentence going to land on a Rich Homie as well, forced to use that sort of devastating ultimate defensively here, and that's going to give up the outer turret in the mid lane. That's probably the third or fourth time we've seen oh a defensive. Oh my goodness, another Death Sentence going to land. Destiny's dead as Bad Game all comes straight into that Dark Binding, but the Dark Passage... Going to be available there as well. Lots of dark things this game. Dark passage, definitely a dark term when we're talking about <laughs> Oceanic teams. Been our thorn for many a year, but... I mean, Rich Homie's had to use, what, the defensive ultimate three, four times in lane, in team fights now. They haven't really gotten the decisive, unstoppable force they've been looking for. It's been used aggressively at least once. But they need to be caref careful here, Rich Game, because if Avant are using their power sites, using their Trinity Force, we actually the War Mogs is completed by Chelby. So happy with that slot efficient damage from the Warrior that he's now going to soak so much mixed damage right here. And it's worth knowing that Siv is not the best tank buster, has the Infinity Edge and PD, so we'll be doing respectable damage to Chelby. But the rest of the damage is kind of burst relevant. So health is probably the best statistic against the burst coming out of Chenny Boy and Rich Homie. So very good itemizing coming out of Chelby. Yeah, and there's the fact that, you know, you don't build a Blade of the Ruin King generally on this Sivir either. So no Blade of the Ruin King users not going to be able to cut through that health, and it's a very good idea. This Ruby Crystal picked up by Bad Game Lol might be come turning into that after a little while as Johnny gets caught by a charm, and yep, he is dead yet again. And this might be the downfall of Avant-Garde is the fact that they just aren't able to get the vision control back. Yeah, they've got a few wards on the map, but 
Look at Rich Gang. They've got vision of everywhere. As on the hunt's being popped, Mizui's just going to get destroyed. And Chelby now has been discovered by that Vault Breaker here. The Destiny to come through. Chenny Boy finds him, but Chelby going to flash out of the way there. And Kensty going to make his way back to this mid lane as well. Just wants to clear out all of the minions. As Rich Homie just playing front, man. Dark Binding not going to find Chelby. There's the Unstoppable Force, so that'll get him. The Denting blows coming straight into Chelby's head. Kensty trying to do some work, but... Jenny Boy picks up another kill, 6-3 and 6 now on this Ari. So powerful, the Foxfire now spinning around him, looking for bad game lore, but they're not going to go back onto this tanky Aurelia. As Kensi just walks straight into a Dark Binding, and there is the charm, easy as you like. I mean, Destiny is actually the thing we have to talk about here, and not the Twisted Fate Ultimate, but the wonderful Dark Bindings coming out of this Morgana oh, yeah. right here. That was the pick on the Dark Binding onto Corky under turret was actually what won them all that pressure right here. And you can kind of see the contrasting game plans coming out of Avant and coming out of Rich Gang. Rich Gang have been grouped looking for picks, and all the time during that fight, we saw the split push coming out from Aurelia, took down the inner turret in the top lane, got the minion wave crashing onto the inhibitor turret, but was forced eventually to teleport back defensively because of all the picks coming out from Destiny. So it's not often that the, that the support needs to get special mention in these sort of situations, but so on point with those skill shots on that Dark Binding. Yeah, and always using them at the right times. He's always in the right places as well to pick up these picks when the charms can come through, when the assault and batteries or the unstoppable forces can come down as well. As Johnny's going to go very deep onto this one, but it's going to be super dangerous. He does end up flashing away, but Dayshifter picks up the kills. Mizui trying to get away from the soul shackles. Destiny locks him down and then gets the heck out of there. Bad game wall trying to do some work, but Huey is on defensive duties. Kensi's found his way in here as well as Mizui's doing a lot of damage here to Rich, homie. But no members of Rich Gang going to fall, and Shelby and Johnny are dead, and Dragon just came up. And worth noting that this is going to be the fourth Dragon if they can pick it up right here. The timer will be on once this is smited down. The fourth Dragon is claimed. The fifth Dragon is always a timer to end games. It's going to be a very early fifth Dragon, around the 33-20 mark. And that's where Rich Gang's comp. Okay, they're not huge on the damage, but between Chenny Boy, Day Shifted, and that fifth Dragon buff, they'll be just fine. Oh, most... Definitely. And maybe looking for a Baron around that point as well. And once you got both of those buffs, there's almost nothing Avant-Garde can do. And it's been this neutral objective control that Rich Gang have really helped themselves snowball the game with. And you have to say, also denying away all of the dragons is the other big deal here. Of course, fifth dragon is incredibly important. Getting to that stage early is great. But denying your opponent of those 6% uh, stats is huge and that first dragon is so important and it's a tale of two corkies once again in the previous game we saw the power of grouping with the corky aurelia combo so many objectives being able to push down in the mid game although they've been very good at pushing these sideways the sideways have been well pushed out consistently for advance stopping the potential sixth man snowball coming out from rich gang but much more importantly, the big thing to consider right here is the fact that with a Corky comp, to be four dragons in the hole in mid-game is a huge problem right here. They have not got the mileage out of that mid-game pick. Avon got aggressively pushing out this mid lane, though, as Rich Homie's going to head back to his team. Rich Gang hanging around uh, out the side here. Dark Binding not going to find its target, but Shelby's getting aggressed on. Dark Passage is going to be beautifully used to get them out of the way. Foxfire doing a lot of work onto Shelby here as well. His engage potential is lowering now that, that health pool has been depleted somewhat. And Rich Game pushing back very hard. Oh, Shelby gets caught by the charm there as well. Actually goes over the wall, finds Rich Homie. Safeguard's back there as well. Some very interesting plays coming through from Shelby, but he's not dead. Seismic Shard onto Mizui here, and Rich Gang aggressively pushing out this inner turret. They're going to take it down. Bad game low. Going in so far as Rich Homie's going to use that unstoppable force into the back line. Rich Homie's dead, and look at the soul shackles to come through as Huey just goes over the wall and destroys Mizui. Rich Gang's team fighting is fantastic. And if we're going to single out Shelby for the Warmox pickup, look at the strength of the front line from Rich Gang. Their heart come out basically unscathed to Malphite and Vi right here. And there's nothing that Corky can do. Although he's so strong in the mid game, if you have a champion like Malphite and Vi in your face, the AoE from the Rockets, the Phosphorus Bomb, can never be used on the back line. And he's just getting no damage to the super tanky front man. And Rich Gang 
instead of going for that inhibitor turret that was foiled a little bit by Ken Steve pushing out the wave, heading towards that turret, they are going to start off this Baron. Shelby's up again, though. Has a lot of health with that Warmox. There's the teleport from Bad Game Law, who's just come through. Sonic Wave going to land, and Shelby, he might just say thank you very much and pick up this Baron. Huey's there as well. It's going to be a 50-50 on this one. Bad Game Law trying to do some work. Shelby picks it up. The Steel Lord himself, he'll take it away. The flash over from Bad Game Law, and Rich Gang with an overly aggressive Baron, not paying off Shelby, he's gonna get punished for it, but Flash is out of the way. Dark Passage is available, he'll be able to take that if he wants to, but there's also a Sonic Wave that he can take as well, and Mizui's here. Rich Gang, Rich Homie with no mana here. Has the Black Shield gonna do some work? Oh, Bad Game Lol, so incredibly low. He'll have to get out. Chenny Boy feels robbed after that one. And this inner turret going to fall down as well. Avant-Garde turning it around. After so many smart mid-game rotations, kind of a brain fade to choose to opt into a Baron with the team comp they have right here. Okay, Fi does respectable Baron damage, but Sivir's not a great champion taking Baron. Malphite offers basically nothing. Oh. Is able to get the assassination on Kensi. That gets away one Baron buff, but still plenty left on the Avant Gaming side. And you have to say, this is going to be a bit of a reset button for Avant Guard. Their waves are going to push out significantly. So hard to take an objective like an inhibitor against the big Baron buff right here. And just the question for Rich Gang is why? Why did they go for the Baron when everything was working so well for them and their comp's just not really a Baron taking team? Yeah, they could have rotated towards that top side. They could have pushed out these waves so that they could start more of a push or at least just consolidated vision around the Baron and set up a pick. That is what their comp is designed for and if they're able to get these wards out they'll be able to get that one down. The blue buff is going to be stolen away here in response to the steal that came through before. Of course now sitting on top of Chenny Boy as uh, Kensty had picked that one up. He is going to be alive yet again and Destiny is available. There's the charm to Johnny here as well. They might be able to pick up a pick, but the Dark uh, Binding going to land onto Chelby in the backside. He's tanky, definitely, and managing to escape just here with a slim amount of health. Chelby's actually... Chenny Boy, sorry, is going to fall down at the same time as Zui's going to use that Valkyrie to get himself to safety. Kensty around the backside did use that Destiny to get in. There's the Zonya's Hourglass as well. Bad game while collapsing in at the same time. This is beautiful play but from Avant-Garde. Coming through for their mid laner and Huey forced to back away. Four dead now for nothing in favor of Avant-Garde. Such beautiful play. Yeah, they're going to continue their chase down on Huey. Has no mana, so probably will eventually fall right here. But let's talk about the bigger picture right here. Watching that fight, you could see Siva left completely to the wolves. Was basically instant killed by Bad Game Lol from half health. They were not fighting around their carries whatsoever right there. Let their carries fall early. And then they're just tanky men walking around. Sure, they're slow to kill, but they're not going to be doing any big work themselves. And Rich Gang, they need to really seriously re-examine their team fighting because it's costing them. Yeah, and this is the Rich Gang that we haven't seen yet. The Rich Gang that isn't in control of the game past this 30-minute mark. And we were wondering what we were going to see from them if they weren't ahead at this stage. And I feel like we're starting to see it now. Avant-Garde able to out-team fight this team with superior, superior positioning. And Rich Gang aren't able to bully. And it's almost that unfortunate situation that having such an easy promotion series might be costing them there because at the highest tier of play, you need to be able to team fight smartly in the late game. And that's not to say Rich Gang can't do it. They've just struggled with the last two team fights. And if they lose another one, they may lose the majority of their base. Yeah, things could be very difficult. You have to think that they need to be taking down these key targets. Chelby is soaking so much attention from Rich Gang. But this is the fifth dragon now being contested, potentially, for Rich Gang. The first and all-important one for Avant-Garde here as well. A very, very important objective as both of these teams are facing off. Oh, Bad Game Law is going to find Chenny Boy. The Destiny is going to be popped as well. There's on the hunt. This fight could be on now as Destiny not decided on just yet. Huey around the backside. Bad Game Law taking a lot of damage. Destiny going to use that Soul Shackle. going to get a couple of stuns here as well as Mizui gets locked up by Rich Homie. He's almost out of this fight. Chenny Boy takes down Kensty on the backside, but Day Shifted is dead as well. Avant-Garde only losing Kensty and a couple of big members are dead on the side of Rich Gang. There's a nice charm to land onto Chelby but doesn't find the Sonic Wave. And he's going to be able to back away from this one. And they're not looking for the Dragon here. They're wanting to take this Inhibitor turret as Mizui is available. Gets caught by a Dark Binding after that 
Dark Passage comes through here as well, but they're going to be able to take down this turret. Oh, if they get the last auto attack, the charm lands on a bad game all here as well as Rich Gang able to answer back a little bit. Shelby caught by a Dark Binding. He's so tanky though. And these Dark Passages have been beautiful from Johnny. Rich Homie doesn't have the ultimate just yet as Bad Game Lord's going very aggressive, unfortunately, here. The double kill to come through from Chenny Boy. Could it be the Quadra? The triple's already there. Mazui in a lot of trouble. And they really overstayed that one. But most importantly right here, you could see Avant oh, turning oh, the quads. It's the Quadra kill, but the Quags were turning in their heads. They realized, all right, we got an inhibitor turret. That's massive. But they're on the fifth dragon. They're going to pick up their fifth dragon if we don't get a pick. But they were too overzealous trying to get their own pick right there. And that's the fifth dragon. And it could be the game for Rich Gang. The death time is 15 seconds. Only Kensti alive. It's going to be very difficult to protect against this fifth dragon. Yeah, and Kensti, he's dead. Actually managing to pick up the pentakill is Chenny Boy. I did not know we'd lasted that long. But killing every member of Avant Garden. That is why you don't let Ari into the hands of an assassin player on this patch. Really pushing the bounds of the Pentacle. I believe it's about 20 seconds after a Quadra you can pick it up. Right at the end of it, picking up the Pentakill. All of it started by Avant pushing an objective, playing assertive, then realizing, oh crap, they're on the fifth dragon. They are potentially going to go pick it up for free with our low health bars. They thought they could get a single pick, walk away and kind of distract which game from that objective. But all they've managed to do is perhaps seal their own fate. Potentially here as Dayshift is going to get caught by that Sonic Wave. And of course the Smite here as well that did actually manage to pop that one. He was actually baiting the whole time. Shelby takes so much damage. Dark Passage unable to be taken as Johnny now on the run. Beautiful play here as Johnny's going to have to oh, escape through all of these minions here as well. Lock it to the Iron Solari is going to get popped for some random reason as Huey just wants to do some cool buttons. And Chenny Boy going to pick up another kill. And Chenny Boy, I can only imagine how much damage he's doing with 12% AD and AP bonus. Of course, his Foxfire is counted as a single target spell, so getting the 40 true damage as well Whoa. from that fifth dragon. So much damage coming out from Chenny Boy right here. I mean, Ari might be overtuned, but anyone looks good with these many items. Oh, yeah. Unstoppable force under Kenzie here as well. Rich Homie, he got ganked, but it doesn't look like it as Bad Game Law wants to come through. Gets an equilibrium strike, but not going to be doing too much. Of course, shrugging off that tower now with those double armor items, but with two members in the bottom side, Destiny on cooldown. Rich Gang, they're just going to start off this Baron, and they have complete neutral control. Oh, so much damage from that rocket, but Mizui able to get, you know, some lower health bars in exchange for the Baron. A Baron and a fifth dragon. This is definitely the 2015 patch in full power right here. Rich Homer just wants to stop backs. He's happy to push his advantage. So, so tanky, even just over half health right here. The fresh shops come out. Not actually at six items is a surprise coming out from this Ari, but 15, 4, and 11. Chenny Boy might have found his home on the Rich Gang after just such a checkered and historical career. Oh, yeah. Chenny Boy looking fantastic on this Ari. But... You know, you can't uh, go past the other members of Rich Gang here as well because Day Shifted having a great game for himself as well, sort of sitting in that back line, getting that on the hunt exactly when his team needs to. He's a small aeroplane at this stage. And we can't overstate those Dark Bindings from Destiny so on point with that slow-moving skill shot. If he did not hit that dark, that dark Binding under the turret onto Corky, assassinate him right there, the huge sidewave minion push created by a bad game lol, and Kensti's spit pushing might have forced this game in a different direction, but Rich Gang, they're being clutch. That's the word that we're going to associate with them here. They're being clutch in a really high-pressure situation, so we're learning that this is a strength to their bow. This is something we can expect to them moving into the OPL, and oh they're definitely in with a shout of being a top team. And this is so smart as well. Look at the warding that they have on this top side, moving four members up there as Rich Homie keeps Kensti busy. They're going to take this inner turret easy as you like, and they can spot all of the rotations. The Dark Bindings can come through as Mizui. He's going to take a base gate to safety here as Rich Gang are looking to try and put their extra pressure down. They do have some barrened up minions here, but unable to protect that siege minion. They're just happy to pick up the inner turret as Rich Gang now preparing themselves. I think that they know that they need to get a pick here because Avant Garde have been team fighting really well. And speaking of picks, Chenny Boy's rotating bot. It's a big issue that Kensti has to be one splitting against Rich Homie because, okay, Malphite doesn't have a lot of turret damage or a lot of wave clear, and Twisted Fate has a significant advantage in that situation, but you're never going to be able to get the Destiny away 
if Malphite's in your face. He'll just ult you and cancel that teleport and basically negate everything. And look at how fast this turret falls down. Yeah, they are destroying this one. Shelby does manage to find a flank here, but look at the two siege minions coming through. Rich Homie gets smited here as Johnny's actually looking for Jenny Boy. The destiny came through. There's a Zonya's hourglass, but I'm not sure it'll save in the shutdown from Johnny as Rich Homie. He's getting bullied out here as well. They do do a lot of damage to the turrets, but might be forced to get the heck out. But importantly, they don't lose their inhibitor turret in the top lane so they have not lost that super important structure just yet they'll regroup right here but a bit more breathing time for Avant but you have to feel the life support they've been on ever since that fifth dragon came through is starting to really really be questionable here and with a minute till the dragon comes back a refresh of that fifth dragon surely spells doom for Avant yeah of course Baron buff has worn off now as well so Avant now with a little bit as you mentioned more breathing room than they otherwise would but they need to start picking up these dragons to deny the fifth and to get themselves the fourth get themselves onto even footing because you look at the gold there's not even any more than you know 3,000 gold in this game it is still very very close towers are close as well of course the inhibitor turret in the mid lane is gone on the side of avant-garde they've picked that one up for themselves only an inner turret is in it as far as, you know, evening that out is concerned. Avantgarde's still looking fine if they manage to get some neutral objectives on this map. And yeah, the value of the 12% stats is what comes through here. It's not the 3,000, actually only 2,500 gold yeah. that the gold lead reflects. It's, again, all in the massive stats, but we might see a huge fight come here. Ooh. Mizui's very aggressively positioned in this fight. Super aggressive. Dodges out of the way of the charm there as well as... These teams are going to face off against one another. Wildcard's doing some poke damage there from the backside as Kensti has a few gigantic items now under his belt. Has finished off that Abyssal Scepter here as well. Going to help with a lot of Mizui's damage as Seismic Shard's going to rip through his health bar there a little bit. Rich Homie's taking next to no damage as he has so much health and armor. And he's just an unstoppable force there in the backside. Bad Game Lol's actually going to start this fight off as Locker to the Iron Slayer. He's going to get popped here as well. Bad Game Lol, he's going to get taken down. Destiny with a beautiful Soul Shackle is going to lock down multiple members. Jenny Boy is going to survive. Kensi going to fall down. And Rich Gang are tearing a hole in Avant Garde. Mazui going to die as well. And it's the double kill for both carries for Rich Gang. And it's the double death for Avan as a team right here. 0 2 it's going to be as Rich Gang have plenty of time to finish off this game. Wonderful play right there. And you see the difference in their team fighting when uh, Day Shifted in the back line isn't instantly assassinated by the array. They fought around their carry excellently. They adapted after all those mid game team fight issues right here. And at 42 minutes, they'll just tank this turret and finish off this game. Yeah, tanking this one up, I mean. 20 seconds on the death timer of Bad Game LOL and Johnny's going to be up relatively soon but look at the Nexus turrets melt. The Nexus going to follow and a beautiful game from Rich Gang. Avant Garde didn't give it to them easily but man, Rich Gang, when they know exactly what they want to do and execute it, man, they look fantastic. And we definitely saw flashes of brilliance from Avant right there. There was a portion where we said, all right, they've corrected some of the mistakes from the first series and they're going to really bring it in the second one. But it was that Dragon Snowball that really won it there for Rich Gang. Very objective focus was their play. It's been a trademark of this team the four times we've seen them out. And on this fifth time, they get their first win in the OPL as we jump into a replay to really see a reflection of this game. So it's 41 minutes. We're really late into the game as we roll this replay. So as the fight starts right here, Aurelia goes into the back line, but I think Day Shift is the one to follow just because he's been so consistently assassinated in fights. This time, Chenny Boy farts around him and he's able to live right here. And that you can see the effects of the on the hunt on his teammates in the front line. They're all so tanky. Malphite lives a ridiculous amount of time given the focus fire he was eating. And it just looks easy when you fight around your carries, the two carries in the back line peeling for each other well, and they take out this game. Yeah, it looked fantastic there as well as Chenny Boy picks up the first pentakill of the OPL here as well. So the first week, first pentakill, and we'll see whether we can keep them flowing through as far as like, you know, at least one pentakill a week. I'd like to see that one. But of course, we are only halfway through the OPL for today. We are going to be back very soon with our third game of the night, guys. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 